Hello friends, you must have seen that if anything made of iron is left in the open for 3 to 4 days or kept on the roof, then rust starts forming on it. And this type of iron rod gets completely rusted inside within about 4 to 6 months. That is, the entire iron rod gets rusted and it becomes useless. But this iron pillar standing in the Qutub Minar complex of Mehroli is a mystery in itself. It is a wonder because this pillar has been facing all kinds of things like sun, rain and dust in the open ground for the last 1600 years. But despite this, you cannot see any kind of rust on this iron pillar. That is why it is called Marvel of Metallurgy. This iron pillar is 7 meters tall and has inscriptions on it which are in Sanskrit. These inscriptions were deciphered for the first time by James Princip in 1838. And after deciphering, it was told that details about the conquest of a king have been given on this pillar, whose name is Chandra. Apart from this, he also told that there used to be a Garur, that is an eagle on this pillar, which may have disappeared in these 1600 years. That means it was originally a Garur flag. Along with this, it has also been mentioned in this inscription that this pillar was installed at a place named Vishnu Padgiri. But this place has not been identified yet because we have not been able to find the place which was called Vishnu Padgiri 1600 years ago. But it was removed from its original place and installed near the Qutub Minar in the Qutub Minar complex during the medieval period. And historians believe that the king mentioned here, that is King Chandra, is none other than Chandragupta II, who was the son of the greatest ruler of Gupta dynasty, Samudra Gupta. But some historians also believe that the rule of Chandragupta II did not start immediately after Samudra Gupta. In between, a king named Ram Gupta became the ruler and he was the elder son of Samudra Gupta, that is, elder brother of Chandragupta II. But due to lack of historical evidences, we believe that Chandragupta II became the ruler after Samudra Gupta, who ruled from 380 AD to 415 AD. And this was the time when the power and glory of the Gupta Empire was at its peak. And the main reason behind this was the qualities of Chandragupta II. Actually, Chandragupta I, who was the grandfather of Chandragupta II, was a diplomacy genius and he had PhD in matrimonial alliances. And on the other hand, Samudra Gupta, father of Chandragupta II, was a military genius. And the special thing is that, inside Chandragupta II, there was a cocktail of both these qualities. He had military acumen as well as understanding of diplomacy. So let's understand how Chandragupta II used these two qualities to take the Gupta Empire to its peak. Here in the map, you can see that when the rule of Chandragupta II started, in what part of India was the Gupta Empire spread? So this was the territorial extent of the Gupta Empire. Apart from this, he had two main rivals. The first was the Shakas in the Western India, where the rule of Rudra Simha III was going on. And in Deccan, there was Vakatakas, where the rule of Rudra Sen II was going on. In such a situation, Chandragupta II got his daughter Prabhavati Gupta married to King Rudra Sen II of Vakataka. It was a master stroke that changed the entire equation of the region. A matrimonial alliance had taken place between the two rivals. After this, Chandragupta II defeated Ruth Simha III with the help of Vakatakas. And in this way, in the Indian history, the Shakas came to an end. Now they have been completely abolished. The advantage of this victory to Chandragupta II was that now Western India had also become a part of the Gupta Empire. Victory over Shakas is seen as the greatest military achievement of Chandragupta II. And that's why after his victory, he took the title of Shakari. Shakari means destroyer of Shakas. And after this victory, he also performed Ashwamedha Yagya, which increased his power and prestige exponentially. And he took the title of Vikramaditya. Vikramaditya means son of prowess. That is, one who is courageous like the sun. So we saw that after defeating the Shakas, Western India had become a part of the Gupta Empire, in which Western Malwa, Katyawar region and Gujarat are also included. And at the same time, the seaports of this region such as Broch, Sopara and Kambay were also now under the control of the Gupta Empire. 
That is why now they could trade with the West without any interference. So now fine cotton clothes from Bengal, indigo from Bihar, silk from Banaras, scent from the Himalayas and sandalwood and spices from the south were being exported to the west without any restrictions. And in return, a lot of Roman gold started coming to India. And because of this reason, the wealth of the Gupta Empire started increasing very rapidly and it is visible in their coins. The credit for issuing the largest amount of gold coins in Indian history is given to the Gupta Empire. They issued various types of gold coins. It is obvious that there would be many such cities which would have been benefited from this trade. One such city was Ujjain, which is in present-day Madhya Pradesh. Because of this flourishing trade, Ujjain emerged as a commercial city. And at the time of Gupta Empire, it was considered the second capital. The first capital of the Gupta Empire was Patliputra. Let us now come back to the Vakatakas. Because some interesting events took place here, which are related to Gupta Empire. So we had seen that Rudrasen II was ruling here, whose wife was Prabhavati Gupta, daughter of Chandragupta II. But Rudrasen II died shortly after marriage. And because the son of Rudrasen II and Prabhavati Gupta Gupta was still small and could not become a king. That is why it was said that Prabhavati Gupta will rule as the regent of that child until this child is fit to become a king. In this way, she ruled from 390 AD to 410 AD. During this, she also got many inscriptions written. And in each inscription, she gave the detail that she belongs to Gupta ancestry. In a way, it can be assumed that now Vakatakas were also virtually part of the Gupta Empire. Now let's talk about Bactria. Kushan used to rule here. If you remember, Samudra Gupta, the father of Chandragupta II, had drove away the Kushans. And now they had only one place, that is Bactria. Now Chandragupta II had caught sight of that. Chandragupta II attacked Bactria while crossing the Indus River and drove away the Kushans. So if we look at the territorial extent of Chandragupta II, then we can see that in the east, his territory was spread up to eastern Bengal. River Narmada in south, western Malwa, Kathiawar Peninsula and Gujarat in west also came under his territorial area. And in northwest, he had extended his territory till Bactria. Apart from this, he had also patronized many scholars. These were called Navratnas. Kaha Panak and Vara Mihiras were astrologers. Kalidas, Harisen and Vishak Datta were poets. Harisen, if you remember, he was the court poet of Samudragupta as well. And it was he who got Samudragupta's inscriptions written on the Allahabad pillar. But even after getting old, he was patronized by Chandragupta II. And this was the time when Kalidas produced many masterpieces, one of which is Meghdutam. Vishak Datta composed Mudra Rakshas at this time, which is said to be one of the sources of the modern period. Apart from this, Chandragupta II had also patronized Amar Singh, who was a Sanskrit lexicographer and poet. Lexicographer is a person who compiles a dictionary of any language. He composed Amar Kosh, a lexicon of Sanskrit vocabulary. Along with this, you can also see here the name of Shudrak, who composed Mrich Katika. Apart from this, you can also see great physician Dhanvantri and architect Sanku here. So these were the details of Chandragupta II. To understand Indian history and Indian polity in detail, do follow Bookstava playlist. Link is given in the description box. Thank you for watching Bookstava.